Hey folks, Dr. Joe Esposito here. Hope everybody's having a wonderful day. And today we're going to talk about something that's been bothering me for a while now. And I've been thinking about this and I'm thinking, what do we do about it? And the sad part is there is an answer, but it's not being made public. And we're going to talk about why the American lifespan is actually declining. We're the only industrialized nation in the world that has a declining life expectancy. And it doesn't seem to be making news. Well, it is now because, of course, I'm talking about it. And most of that, the reason behind most of that, are things that you're doing. What that means is it's self-induced. Now, that really stinks because that means you have control over how long you live in most cases. And you're not doing anything about it. So for the first time in two decades, life expectancy has declined in the United States. Obesity appears to be the major role along with raising rates of eight leading causes of death, including heart disease, stroke, diabetes, and dementia. Dementia, this is amazing to me because I've been seeing it, but I didn't see the stats on it. Dementia rose 15.7% between 2014 and 2015. 15% increase. Now, I see it in my practice. I have patients come in, and a lot of times patients come see us because they've tried everything else. Now, I guess all practices have that. You've tried everything else, and whatever practice you have, you're the last resort. But I have people coming in all the time, people you know, in their 40s, 50s, and talking about their parents and saying, my folks are really in bad shape, and I need your help. They're starting to lose their mind. They're starting to wander away, and I'm scared, and what can we do? And so they bring them in, and, and way back, I've been in practice you know, over three decades, 32, 33 years now. I didn't see a lot of dementia patients, but now I'm seeing it more and more because the generation who's becoming the senior generation went through the times, the 80s, the 90s, and the early 2000s, when we started changing our food supply. We started using steroids, hormones, chemicals, pesticides, herbicides, genetically modified foods. Now, there's a lot of evidence showing that that's the reason it's happening. And the nice part is you don't have to expose yourself to that. Now, is there documented proof? I think there is. People may debate that. But either way, this is the kicker. I always say, I say this all the time to my patients. Let's assume I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, so what? I'm wrong. You ate well. You took care of yourself. You got chiropractic care. You fixed your stomach. uh, You got your digestive system working. But if I'm right, which I am because I've been doing this for a long time now, you're going to say, wow. I should have done this sooner. And that's the biggest complaint I get in my office is, why didn't I do this sooner? So play my game and see if I'm right. And if I'm right, I think you'll be very happy with that. Latest data from National Centers for Health and Sci- uh, from National Center for Health Statistics show life expectancy for both men and women in the U.S. dropped between 2014 and 2015. Uh, and again, this is a couple of years ago. From 76.5 years... Uh, to 76.3 years for for men and women down a little bit. Anyway, the bottom line is this. A decline of 0.1 years in life expectancy means are people dying on average a little over a month earlier and two months earlier for men. Now, not a big deal, right? It's two months, so what? They're old, right? Uh, Two months doesn't really matter. But this is the beginning of a trend. And again, these are are statistics from a couple years ago. I couldn't find recent ones, so a lot of times they'll do statistics and by the time they get it together and publish it, but when I talk about things, I've been doing this for, like again, 35 years, including my education, and we talk about things, and at first it's not headlines. Now suddenly, two, three, five years, ten years later, it is. In fact, I have a folder. I need to do a show on this, actually. It's called Dr. Joe Was Right. All the things we talked about years and years ago that have now come to fruition. And so many people say, I wish I'd listened to you two years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years ago. So listen to me here, folks, because if it's starting now, I promise you it's going to get worse unless you do something about it. And just like when I go over x-rays with a patient, I'll show them their spine and I'll say, listen, this is normal. This is yours. Can you see how the bones are out of place? See the discs are deteriorating? Yes. Okay. You have one of two options. This is what I tell my patients. You have one of two options. One is fix it and two is not fix it. And if you fix it, you'll be very happy. And if you don't fix it, I promise you, guarantee 100%, you're going to be very unhappy that you did not heed the warning on this day. Most patients listen. Some don't. Some think they know more than me. That's okay. Eventually, they come back in the office, and I take new x-rays, do new exams, and I show them how much worse their condition is 5, 10, 20 years later. And I've had people cry, scream, curse, punch my tables. Not they're mad at me. 
They made it themselves. You told me this was going to happen. Yeah, I did. I'm not going to lie to you. If bones in your spine are out of alignment, they have to wear out. It's not an option. If the tires on my car are out of alignment, they have to wear out. So if structurally there's something out of whack, it's going to deteriorate. Guaranteed 100%. So if you come into my office and I take an extra and I show you that the spine is crooked, the hips are crooked, the neck doesn't have the proper curve in it, promise you it's going to deteriorate. This is what's happening with the American health. The healthcare system right now is treating symptoms when not treating the cause, generally speaking. That's a general statement. And I want to get to the cause of your problems and not just treat the symptoms. In all, there were 86,212 more deaths in 2015 compared to 2014. So 86,000 more people died. U.S. ranks 29th out of 43 countries for life expectancy. We lag behind countries like Chile, Costa Rica, Slovenia, Korea, Czech Republic. In 2014, we were 28th. So we dropped down in one year. I'm guessing now statistics is probably lower than that. So with all the money we have, and all the technology we have, we're living less. Now, isn't that how you win the game? Don't you win the game by living the longest and the healthiest? We spend more money per capita. I'm going to cover that in a little bit. We cover more. We spend more money per capita than per capita means per person than any other country in the world, and yet we're ranked 29th out of 43. And in certain areas, certain statistics, we're ranked dead last. So it's time you, the American public, sit up and take notice. Because if you don't, it's going to get worse. And this was interesting. The the man who did the study, his name was, uh, if I'm pronouncing this right, Ji Kwan Zhu, the report's lead lead author, noted that the decline in life expectancy is preliminarily caused by a rise in several categories of preventable deaths. Highlighting the failure of the American healthcare system to properly address the root cause of chronic disease. I just dramatically dropped my notes. Imagine me doing that. Boom. And the reason I did that is he said it right there. We're not properly addressing the root cause of chronic disease. We're treating the symptoms in most cases and not treating the cause. So if we start thinking about it, in fact, I just got a text from a friend of mine on my way into the studio. And him and another friend of mine uh, went scuba diving. And the one guy, he parties a lot, and he doesn't really take the best care of himself. And he caught the flu out of of the country, and now he's in the hospital. And apparently they're going to have him on antibiotics. And that's good. We're treating the symptoms of the flu, and I have no problem with that. Let's treat the symptoms. But then we have to say, why did he get sick and everybody else on the trip didn't? Something was wrong. His immune system was weaker. And I want you to think, next time you get sick, why did I get sick? I believe you got sick. What, no matter what the condition is, I got neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, got the flu, have acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, dementia, whatever it is, I want you to think, why? And then start backtracking and say, what could I have done differently so that in the future, you don't have it happen again? Now, I'm a chiropractor. I'm board certified in chiropractic, orthopedics, pain management. I'm double board certified in nutrition, BS in nutrition, a retired dietitian, award winning author. Nationally, obviously, this show is nationally syndicated. Uh, internationally, really, with the internet now, we're all over the world. And so people come to me all the time from all over the world and say, What can we do to get well? And I say, Let's find out why you're not well. So as a chiropractor, I look to the cause of the problem. We spend so much money treating pain. I'm going to cover that in a little bit too. The the protocols that we have for pain management, I believe, are totally wrong. And we need to change them. Because when people are in pain, we try to cover up the pain. I am not against that. If I have a blazing headache, I have some old spinal injuries, fractures in my spine, degeneration in my spine. I had a very crazy youth, football, hockey, street fights, car accidents, bike accidents. And so I have permanent damage in my spine. And when it flares up, I'll say, wow, this really hurts bad. Maybe I'll take an aspirin or some type of analgesic to cover up the pain. And then I run to my office and I grab one of my doctors and I'll say, find out why this thing is flared up today. And they check me out and they say, oh, this bone is out of place. This shoulder's out of place. Your hip, your, your low back fracture is acting up. And we go ahead and fix it. And so we try to get to the cause of the problem, not just treat the symptoms. So we have to take the model that we have now and combine it 
with getting to the cause of the problem, now we'll have a healthcare system that works. It can't work unless we start looking to the cause of the problem. It's impossible because we're never getting to the roots. And this is what the, the, the lead author, this Ji Kwan Zhu, said. The American healthcare system uh, needs to properly address the root causes of chronic disease. And so many chronic diseases are caused by things that you do. You have control over it. Cost of healthcare in the United States has increased. It's about 17% of the gross domestic product. So $17 of every $100 spent in this country is spent on health care. I'm going to take that sentence back. It's, sent on, it's spent on sick care. If you're healthy, you don't spend money. It's only sick care. So I have to laugh that they call it health care. What a, what a nice euphemism. It's kind of like years ago, they decided to take the word calorie out of the research and call it energy-rich foods. Now, energy-rich foods sound cool, man. I want some energy-rich foods. I want to get some energy. But what we're doing is we're, we're, we're lying. We're using a euphemism. It's not energy-rich foods. It's calorie-rich foods. So here we are calling it health care when it's not. It's sick care. U.S. spends about $3 trillion a year, and it's the worst performing system ranked by multiple aspects of care. So there's many areas that we're the worst. Recent research also demonstrates half the Americans are living with chronic disease. Half. I don't know about you, but that's pretty scary to me. So one out of every two of you have a chronic disease. High blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, high cholesterol, cancer, dementia, arthritis. I can go on and on and on. And a lot of those are self-induced. So recent research also demonstrates half of all Americans are living with chronic disease. And according to the authors, uh, Elizabeth uh, Raisinger and Benjamin Druss, the health of individuals in the U.S. is increasingly being defined by the complexity and multimorbidity, the co-occurrence of two or more chronic medical conditions. So what that's saying is the health of the people in the United States is now being defined by not just one condition, but two. Now, I've been in practice a long time, and I ask every patient that comes in my door, any medications you're on. It is very rare that someone is on just one medication. And how many of you listening are on high blood pressure and or diabetes and or cholesterol. Those are the three main ones. Then you see thyroid. Then you see depression. Then you see painkillers. So it's not just one drug we're even dealing with. We're dealing with many. Now, there's two words I want you to learn. Morbidity and mortality. Morbidity means disease. Mortality means death. So understand the two there. Opioid addiction. This is where we got to start looking at how we need to change our definition of pain management. Opioid addiction appears to be one significant contributing factor in a declining life expectancy in the U.S. In all, more than 50,000 Americans die from drug overdoses each year, and that's a rise about 11%, generally speaking, every year. So why do we take opioids? What are opioids? You ever hear that word? You don't even know what they are. Opioids cover up pain. And so a lot of times you have a back injury, you have a neck injury, you have some, an infection, and we get you on some opioids to cover up the pain. I have no problem with that. We're in a lot of pain. We want to cover up that pain quickly. But if you don't get to the cause of the problem and you keep taking more opioids, eventually you become addicted. And it doesn't matter how tough you are. It doesn't matter if you're a, a, you know, a Navy SEAL, if you're a Marine, if you're a construction worker. It doesn't matter how tough you are. Once those opioids get into the brain, they stimulate the pleasure centers in the brain and they block pain. And when you come off them, what happens is when you take a drug, your body stops producing its own natural component. So, for example, if I'm on opioids, my brain stops producing its normal amounts of, of pain-killing chemicals, maybe like GABA, for example, is one of them. GABA is a neurotransmitter that suppresses pain. And so now I have to take more because when I come off it, my brain isn't producing its own and I'm much more sensitive had a, somebody the other day send me a question about fibromyalgia. And fibromyalgia means everything hurts. That's a good definition. Everything hurts. And I said, the problem isn't in your body. Your problem is in your brain and how you're perceiving pain. So if you have fibromyalgia myalgia, and I push on your shoulder, you drop to your knees. Somebody doesn't have fibromyalgia myalgia, and I push on their shoulder, it's not comfortable, but it, it doesn't drop them to their knees because your brain is perceiving the neurological input differently. And so we need to get the brain calmed down or normalized in cases like that. And that's what happens with opioids.
we start taking them, our brain stops producing its own, and now we want more. And that's where the problems come in. Heroin deaths have risen 23% uh, between 2014 and 2015. Deaths from synthetic opioids, including fentanyl, rose 73%, while deaths from prescription opioids by 4%. Prescription painkillers killed 17,536 people, and that was a couple of years ago. That's a lot. So we need a better protocol for pain management. And this is why I want you to consider dealing with the cause of the problem. If you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, numbness, tingling, chances are you have a bone out of place pinching a nerve, or you have a swollen disc, or you have muscle spasms, or you have such a diet that's creating an acid environment that's irritating the nerves. And so what we need to do is fix that. So as a chiropractor, my doctors and I, we check the bones, all 206 of them in the body, find out which ones are out of place, put them back in place. So step number one, we check for pain. 90% of your nerves don't feel pain. You don't feel your blood pressure. You don't feel your kidneys, your spleen, your gallbladder, your earwax, your toenails, all controlled by nerves. So my concern when I evaluate a patient is not only the nerves that feel pain, it's the nerves that don't feel pain. Because if you have a pinched nerve and you know about it, you also have pinched nerves that you don't know about. That being said, you can have pinched nerves you don't know about because it doesn't have pain. You follow that? You can have a pinched nerve and not know it. So I suggest when it comes to pain management that we incorporate chiropractic, acupuncture, trigger point therapy, start getting to the cause of the problem. Like I'm a huge fan of physical therapy. I think it's great to rehabilitate the body. However, if the bones are out of place or if you're working out, let's just take you going to the gym and working out. You're building up strong muscles around crooked bones. I want you building up strong muscles around straight bones. This is why we need to integrate and not segregate our healthcare system. So, folks, if you have a healthcare problem, you'd like to come see us. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. We would love to be your doctor. Doctors. Go to my website if you want to make an appointment, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe with the number one Dr. Joe in the world, and my website comes up first. And you can book an appointment online, or you can give us a call. We'll set you up. We accept people with all insurances. We accept patients without insurance, car accidents. I have never seen a car accident where the car was damaged where the occupants weren't, ever. So when the insurance company, which if you've ever dealt with the insurance company, you'll know it'll age you quickly. It'll, it'll create chronic disease like high blood pressure. Their job is to not pay you. How can we get around not paying this person? And one of the techniques I've seen them do is they make you so aggravated that you just say, the heck with it, I don't care. And then two years, five years, 10 years later, this problem becomes chronic and you wish you had taken care of it. So trust me on this. If you were in a car and the car was damaged, you were damaged. Because you're not tougher than solid steel. So if you want to make an appointment, go to my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. We'll set you up as soon as possible. Offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. So we're going to continue talking now about why the life expectancy in the United States is actually dropping. And we got to get to the cause of the problem. And it could be a foot out of place. In fact, I had that the other day. Uh, I twisted my ankle. I was just out walking, and I (laughs) slipped off a curb like an idiot. Twisted my ankle, and it hurt. So I went to my doctors. They adjusted it. It was good. It felt a little better. It was still hurting for a couple of days. And then I started getting some neck pain. And I had my doctors check me, and they said, well, your neck is an issue, but let's check everything else to find out why the neck is an issue. And sure enough, when I twisted my ankle, I had thrown one of the bones in my foot out of place. The foot stopped hurting. But because my feet were out of alignment, it was throwing my whole body off, which was causing my neck to hurt. Got my foot adjusted, got my knee adjusted, got the rest of my spine adjusted. Adjusted means put the bones back in place, and it was fine. So I want you to think about that, that maybe your foot injury or that knee injury you hurt while uh, skiing when you were a child is now causing other problems. And if the bones are out of alignment, like we said earlier, they will wear out, which kind of stinks. And nerves control organs. Now, we also have to look at diet as well because the nerves, the way the nerves work is like this. You have sodium and potassium, one inside the cell and one outside the cell of the nerve. And when they switch back and forth, they go in and out, the sodium and potassium go inside and out, they create an electrical charge or an impulse or an action potential, it's called. And that action potential is the nerve firing. So if you don't have the right diet, the nerves can't fire the impulses properly. So not only we talk about heart disease and diabetes, but do you ever wonder why? Like why is it if I eat a lot of sat meat 
and dairy products, I raise my risk of heart disease because the chemistry affects the neurological system. And that now is part of, not the whole, whole picture, but part of why people get sick. We found now, you know, I, I remember studying for years. If you have a high sodium diet, it'll raise your blood pressure. I never understood why. I kind of thought maybe I understood it, but I didn't. Well, the research now shows that sodium, table salt, prevents your body from releasing, not producing, but releasing nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is a chemical that opens up your blood vessels. Potassium helps the body release nitric oxide, which opens up the blood vessels, which lowers the pressure. So when you start getting into the chemistry, it's kind of fun. But you don't need to know the chemistry. I do. I know the chemistry. I'll tell you what to do. You don't have to know why it works. You just have to know that it works. But back to sodium just for a second so you don't go, oh, go crazy. Sodium, you need sodium. Because remember, sodium and potassium make the nerves fire. So one of the problems I have is we put these people on these low-sodium diets, and now it's affecting the nervous system. There's good salt and there's bad salt. Bad salt would be white table salt. That's bad. That contributes to shortening the U.S. life expectancy. Things like air-dried sea salt have nutrients in them that then have the exact opposite effect of sodium. It actually makes the body work better. It's over 70 different nutrients in pink salt or air-dried sea salt or Himalayan salt. White salt, we take the good stuff, take all the good stuff out of it, all the nutrients and minerals. What's left is sodium chloride. That's the bad stuff. What do you think we do with those nutrients that we take out of the air-dried sea salt? And why would we do that? We take it out so that we can sell it as supplements. What do you think it's supplements from? Gosh, what did, I wonder where they got you know magnesium supplements from. I wonder where they got calcium supplements from. And so that's why if you do take a supplement, which I think you should, by the way, you want to make sure that they are plant-based or whole food sourced. There's a lot of supplements on the market that are now synthetic, and synthetic supplements can actually work in reverse. I, I see studies all the time. Well, there's a study on vitamin C, and it didn't help, whatever the condition they were testing for. Well, then I looked deeper, and they used ascorbic acid, which is only a fraction of the vitamin C molecule. They still call it vitamin C. It's not the whole nutrient. So that's why it's so important if you take supplements. Like, I created something called Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. I take them every day. They're sitting here in the studio in front of me. At least, if you're not willing to do anything else, at least take Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source at least once a day. I take it sometimes twice a day. The two powders, I mix it with uh, coconut milk or almond milk because I don't do animal products. Shake it up and I drink it. It tastes great. And boy, once you start taking it, it's, it's so great because every single day I get emails uh, and sometimes through Facebook or my emails through my web my webpage. People say, Dr. Joe, taking the Super Greens and the Essential Source blew me away. Oh my gosh, I had no idea how tired I was until I started taking this stuff to see how much energy I had, how much better I feel. I'm going to the bathroom better. My love life is improving. My brain is working better. Because most of us are so depleted in nutrients, which is one of the major reasons we're shortening our life expectancy. Now, I'm not saying taking super greens and essential source is going to extend your life expectancy. I believe it will. And that's why I take it. I can take any supplement I want. That's some of the supplements I take. So if you want to get the super greens and the essential source, at least... The minimum amount you should do is do that. Go to my website, drjoesposito.com, or you can just Google Dr. Joe, D-R-J-O-E, Dr. Joe, and we come up first, and you can order Super Greens Essential Source. We have a colon cleanser that's available. If your bowels aren't moving two to three times a day, you can get the colon cleanser. Uh, we have immune boosters. My books are there, Eating Right for the Health of It, uh, Prescription for Extreme Health, lots of articles on the website, archived radio shows. This show is going to be archived there. So the website's a great source of information. Oh, also the supplements are available on Amazon too. The website, drjoesposito.com or, of course, amazon.com. And if you want to make an appointment to come see us, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. I strongly suggest that you do. We want to get the nervous system working, unpinch the nerves. We want to get your diet straightened out, and we want to fix your digestive system, acid reflux, heartburn, many times very easy to fix. We pull the stomach down away from the diaphragm, and it works. So if you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, I love when patients come in and say, Dr. Joe, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Go to my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, and we'll get you set up for an appointment. Our office is Marietta Duluth and Stockbridge. We accept people with all insurances. We accept patients without insurance, car accidents, sports injuries, workers' comp injuries. If you're having pain, that's a warning sign something's wrong. If you ignore it, 
you're going to regret that decision. So again, the website, drjoesposito.com. Folks, got to take a break. Don't go anywhere. Tell your friends about the show. We're going to be right back. Hey, folks, so glad you're spending some time with me today. I do appreciate that. I'm Dr. Joe Esposito. We're talking today about the shortening of the lifespan of citizens of the United States. And here we are, pretty wealthy country. People like it here. People come here from all over the world. And yet we're spending all this money and all this technology and all this research, and yet we're ranking last in many cases, uh, many categories, when it comes to health care. And our life expectancy is shortening. We're the only industrialized nation that has a short, shortening life expectancy. So we're spending more money and getting less results. If the healthcare system were my employee and they were doing worse and worse every year, and I knew there were better employees out there that would work for less money, you know what I would do? I'd fire the U.S. healthcare system and then hire people that would do a better job for less money. Wouldn't you if you were a boss? So I want you to be a boss of your own health. I want you to take control of your own health and say, I'm going to fire what's not working, and I'm going to hire a system that does work. And the system that does work is you taking a lot of responsibility for your own health. Yes, we need doctors. We need medical doctors, chiropractors, psychologists, psychiatrists, dentists. We need all those doctors. Absolutely. But you can take control of your own health, which is going to save a ton of money, personally as well as nationally, and chances are you're going to extend your life expectancy. We know, well, studies have shown, that if you just give up dairy products, nothing else, no other dietary changes, just give up dairy products, you can extend your life for about eight quality years. It's pretty good. If you give up all animal products, go to a plant-based diet, You can extend your life, on average, 11 quality years. So if I had a pill, and I was going to sell you this pill, and I said, listen, Bob, Joan, Barbara, I want to sell you this pill, and it's going to, on average, give you 11 quality years more life. Would you buy it from me? Take it, and you're done. Bet you would. And I bet you wouldn't even ask me how much it cost, because you don't care. It's going to work, and I'm going to use it. Great. And it doesn't matter because I'm going to live 11 quality years. I can make all that money back and more in those last 11 years that I'm alive. So I'm giving you this metaphorical pill for free. It's all yours. No charge. You just have to do it. And the cool part about this is by living a healthier lifestyle, your cost, your expenses just to be alive drop dramatically. My food bill is ridiculously low. And I I do a lot of home prep for food because I love preparing foods. In fact, my first book, uh, uh, Eating Right for the Health of It, talks a lot about food preparation. Now, I just love cooking. I grew up very poor. My father was disabled. Uh, My father had a horrible accident before I was born. Fell off a ladder, broke his back, fractured his skull, went deaf instantly. So my father never heard my voice. Kind of ironic that I'm a, a, a news reporter now. And so we were poor. We grew up, what was, gosh, we... I think it was, let me see if I get the numbers right. Workers' compensation for a family of four paid us $71 a week, if I got the numbers right. And then Social Security paid like $210 a month or something like that. So we grew up really poor. So we we never we went out to dinner once a year. My grandfather, my mother's father, took us out to dinner once a year to a German restaurant. I remember it. And that's the only time we went out to dinner. So I learned how to prepare food. Now, that was a good skill because you save a ton of money. Now, even if you don't like preparing food, you're thinking, Dr. Joe, I don't have time for that food-making stuff. I eat out two, three meals a day, okay? Go to the restaurant next time, cover up the food, look at the prices. Then pick the cheapest thing on the menu, And then look at what it is. Chances are it's the plant-based option. So no matter whether you eat out or you eat home or you prepare or you like having dates over and making dinner for them, you're going to save so much money and you're probably going to live longer just by doing that. I've had patients already say, well, Dr. Joe, you talk about Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source, those supplements. They're relatively inexpensive. It's like a dollar a day for each. And I say, listen, you can't afford not to take them. Because by taking them, you're going to have so much more energy, most likely, can't guarantee anything, and feel so much better and probably even reduce your doctor bills by taking care of yourself. Not just the super greens, the essential source, but everything. So you're going to make money 
by taking on this lifestyle. And they go, oh, okay. Now I can do it. Now I understand it. So the, one of the reasons we're talking today about why life expectancy in the United States is dropping. And the U.S. Anti, anti-obesity campaign has officially failed. Because if I hire you to do a job, here's your project, here's your time limit, these are the results I need to see. And you do it. And I don't get those results. In fact, I get worse results than I had beforehand. I'd probably fire you, wouldn't I? Childhood obesity has worsened between 1999 and 2012. This includes all classes of obesity, but in particular, severe obesity, which poses the greatest risk to children long term. Another CDC report concludes the Americans' battle against the bulge, and especially childhood obesity, has indeed failed. The director of the CDC at the time, Tom Frieden, quote, the data speaks for itself. If you look for the goal we set for ourselves and look at what happened, we didn't achieve it. So we're trying desperately. Now, anybody have kids? Raise your hands. Anybody ever seen what they serve kids in the cafeteria or what happens in school? I remember being in school, fourth grade, Miss Weston. Yeah, Miss Weston. She's not a very nice person, I remember. If she's still around, I wonder if she's still around or not. But I remember gym class. We used to go to gym class, and Miss Regan's class was able to, was it yeah, fourth grade. Miss Regan's class would go to we'd go to the gym and they'd run around and play games and everything, and she'd make us sit on the floor and play board games. So I didn't like her. But anyway, one time she did something nice. She had gone to Japan on a trip and she brought back some Japanese food and let us sample different foods. But other than that, we didn't have cookies and cakes and donuts and junk food constantly. We had lunch which in grammar school we brought ourselves. In high school, it was made for us. You know, we had a cafeteria. But now I look at what we're doing in the school system. Every time somebody sneezes or somebody has a good hair day, oh, we're going to have cookies, we're going to have cakes, we're going to have donuts, here's candy, here's a, 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 a prize for you for being so smart. I'm just amazed that we're using food as a reward system. That's a horrible thing to do. Because when you give food as a reward system and you're having a bad day, you broke up with your significant other, you lost your job, you had a fight with somebody at work, mommy didn't call you, uh, whatever, your friend didn't say your dress looked nice or your pants fit well, I need a reward. I need to feel good about myself. What can I do? Boom. I run off and have junk food. It's human nature because when you eat junk food, it stimulates the pleasure centers in your brain, the nucleus acubens, which releases a chemical called dopamine. And dopamine gets you high. So if I'm having a bad day, my girlfriend just dumped me. I'm going to go out, and if I'm the average American, I'm going to say, man, I could really go for a piece of cheesecake or carrot cake or cookies. And so that's how we start to give ourselves pleasure because that's how we're trained to get pleasure. Instead of self self, self, uh, uh, feeling good about yourself, you start to turn to external sources. And that scares me. And so that's why we've lost the battle of the bulge. Rather than lowering obesity rates for toddlers and children, the obesity rates has grown since 2019 and now exceeds 17%. So 17% of children are obese, not fat, obese. That's bigger than fat. Now, I used to be fat. I can say the F word on the radio because I used to be really fat. When was I fat? Around 10 years old. My mom was overweight, dad was overweight, came from a family of overweight people, so I totally get it. But the difference is this. Even back then, we would eat cakes and cookies and breads, but the the wheat wasn't as toxic as it is now. The sugar, we used sugar instead of high fructose corn syrup. We'd have the dyes and chemicals. You know, we talk about gluten being a big issue. I don't know if you've heard me talk about gluten, and if you eat wheat, it has a protein called gluten. And when gluten gets into your small intestine, it causes an inflammatory reaction. And some people more than others. And that inflammation can go throughout your entire body, even getting up to your brain, leading to things like depression. So people have a sensitivity to gluten because we don't have the enzymes to break down the gluten. So that's where the problem comes in. However, the wheat we use here in the United States, or even recently, um, before 1980, the wheat in the United States didn't have this, A lot of times what they'll do is they'll spray weed killer on the crop of wheat right before they harvest it. And it kills the weeds and it kills the the, the stalks that the wheat is on, the wheat berries are on. So it's a lot easier to harvest if everything is dead. 
So they spray it on a few days before everything dies, and then they harvest it. So it's less stress on the plant, on, on, the, uh, on the farm machines, and it's easier to harvest. So from a business standpoint, that makes sense. But guess what? You're now eating those high levels of toxic weed killers that you weren't eating before the 1980s. And if you go to Europe, a lot of those pesticides and chemicals are banned, those weed killers. And so the wheat is different. And so if you're eating wheat, breads, cookies, cakes, donuts, pastas, you got problems. In fact, I came into the studio today and I saw there was a, somebody had sent a, a tray of donuts or uh, muffins, I'm sorry. And here at the studio, we have a thing called the trough. And in the trough, when anybody has any food, you just throw it on the trough and it just disappears. And so I saw everybody gathering around and breaking in and having, having the, the muffins. And I thought, wow, how unfortunate. Now, not everyone. It's kind of interesting. The thinner, healthier people were sitting at their cubicles and at their desks, and they weren't eating it. But I saw some of the folks who probably have a challenge with health, let's put it that way, you know, looking at it like vultures. Ooh, look how good that is. And so it's not just the food that we're eating. It's how it's been altered since the 1980s. And high fructose corn syrup stimulates your body to produce a chemical called ghrelin. Ghrelin makes you hungry. It goes into the hypothalamus in your brain and makes you hungry. Leptin is released from your stomach and goes to your hypothalamus and tells you that you're full. Well, here's the problem. Sugar is bad. High fructose corn syrup shuts down or decreases the production of leptin, remember the hormone that makes you feel full, and increases the production of ghrelin, the hormone that makes you hungry. So now we go back 1970, and we have a donut with sugar, and it's bad. And we eat it, and it's not, it, it has adverse effects on us. Now we have a donut or a muffin with high fructose corn syrup in it. It makes us more hungry, and we want to eat more. I remember my mom talking about my dad. My dad's passed. And she was saying, you know, one of the reasons I was attracted to your father is he's a very handsome man, but he also had a very nice build on him, a lot of muscles. She says, but then all the guys in that age had muscles. And nobody worked out. There were no gyms back then, you know. But they just worked. They did physical work. And she said, the boys today, you know, talking about my father, I guess she met him when she was 19. She said, the boys today don't have those builds anymore. So it really, and just since my mother's generation till now, we're seeing a change. Even my generation. Back in the 70s, you look at all the pictures of everybody I had in the 70s. The, the guys were thin. They, you know, they, they wore tight pants and they had flat, flat stomachs. The girls were thin and that's not happening anymore. And a lot of it has to do not only with the food, but with the type of food, the challenges that we're spraying these chemicals on the wheat that disrupt our hormones, the high fructose corn syrup versus the sugar. Former first lady, Michelle Obama, remember let's move campaign launched in 2010. It was a miserable failure because it integrated it never integrated the fo foundational nutritional advice that it needed to work. If you want to lose weight and you have one of two options, work out or change your diet, which do you think works best? Changing your diet by far. How many of you work out and just can't get, get rid of the fat? Raise your hands. How many of you work out and can't figure out why your body isn't changing? Raise your hands. Well, a lot of you are older too. I mean, it works for teenagers and 20-somethings, but it doesn't work after that as well as it used to. But a lot of it has to do with changing your diet. So if you have to choose between exercise is good, between exercise and diet, if somebody asked me that question, I would choose changing my diet every day, all day for the rest of my life. Because the chemistry is the thing that's changing the cellular uh, function of your body, which is now helping lead to a lot of these diseases. So if you want to get healthy, if you want to put together a health care plan, I would recommend a normally functioning nervous system. Again, as a chiropractor, I check all my patients for their nervous system because the nervous system controls everything. And if you have pinched nerves, the body can't work because the nerves me message is getting from the brain to the nerves to the body. So I check the nervous system. I would look at your diet. At least, absolute minimum, take Dr. Joe's Super Greens and Dr. Joe's Essential Source. Those are on my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. And at least take that. Because that's going to give you the minimum amount of nutrients to get your body working again. And this is what's cool. When you take something like that, your body starts to feel better. You start to have more energy. You start to move more. And you say, ooh, now I can go to the next step and the next step. 
If you go to the gym and try putting in a two-hour workout, you're going to go, I don't, want, I don't like this. I don't want to do it anymore. But if we start giving you the chemicals that you need, the chemistry that you need to get the body working, you'll have a lot more energy to go out and go for that walk, to go for a swim, to avoid the foods, the junk foods, because your brain is producing its own natural chemicals that make you feel good. You don't need the external source. So the super greens, the essential source, those are on my website, drjoesposito.com. So we want to get your nervous system working, your, your at least a minimum amount of supplements, and we want to get your digestive system working. If you have acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, chances are your stomach is pushed up into your diaphragm. And we need to take your stomach and massage it and pull it down away from the diaphragm. And if we do that, your stomach starts digesting food, starts producing the right amount of leptin, so it goes up to the hypothalamus to tell you that you're full. I know when my stomach acts up, one of the first signs I get is, A, I start burping a lot. And number two, I can't stop eating. I just eat and eat and eat and I just don't feel full. My stomach is hurting. And I know right away my stomach is up against a diaphragm. I need to pull it away from the diaphragm. And usually within minutes, I feel like I could stop eating. So if you have what I have, you probably want to get that checked. So, folks, if you want to come see us, I'd love to have all of you and your family and your children. Because children, if they're crooked, they grow crooked. If they're straight, they grow straight. I'd love to have all of you come into our offices and get checked. See if you have an issue. We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. If you want to come see us, go to my website, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe, number one Dr. Joe on all the search engines, as far as I know. And my name pops up. You can go to our website, see my pretty face there. And you can make an appointment right online. You can order Super Greens and Essential Source. You can send me questions through the website. If you have questions, I'm more than happy to answer your questions for you. We archive radio shows there. We videotape my live lectures. Hope you watch the videos because a lot of people enjoy seeing as opposed to just healing, hearing and healing. Kind of funny. <laughs> Fun Freudian flip there. And make the appointment now. We accept all insurances, people with all insurances, people without insurance, uh, car accidents, sports injuries. Again, if the car was damaged, you were damaged 100% of the time. Even if the pain doesn't show up right away, it will. And the longer you wait, the less likely you are to get a settlement, and you're going to end up paying out of pocket, and you're going to say, why didn't I listen to Dr. Joe? Because every day, patients come in and say, Doc, you were right. I got in the accident, and I didn't hurt, or I hurt it a little bit, and I waited a couple of months, and then I called the insurance company, and they basically told me to go you know, kiss off. So we'd love to have the opportunity to have you and his patients, drjoesposito.com, or just Google Dr. Joe. So we're talking again today about why life expectancy in the United States is dropping. And, you know, we had the uh, former First Lady Michelle Obama, the Let's Move campaign, and it didn't work because she didn't incorporate nutrition as much. She kept talking about getting up and moving, which I support. Never thought I'd say those words. But yes, it's a great that we get up and move, but you got to change the chemistry. According to recent research, nearly 60% of the food Americans eat is something called ultra-processed, and less than 1% of our daily calories come from vegetables. If you can up that to 10% of your total daily calories from vegetables, you would see a dramatic improvement in most people's health. Because we said sodium prevents the body from producing nitric oxide. Potassium allows the body to produce nitric oxide, which opens up your blood vessels. And that'll lower your blood pressure, but it's also increasing circulation to your brain, your happy parts. Kids listen to this, so trying to keep it clean. You need circulation there. Your digestive system, your arms, your legs, your muscles. So that's why you want to get more potassium in your diet, and you get that from eating vegetables. It's pretty simple. So something like you know, green leafy vegetables, low in sodium, high in potassium. Wow, there's double whammy there. And a lot of vegetables have nitrates in them. Na natural occurring nitrates become nitric oxide, which opens up your blood vessels. So here's my rule on this. I want you to have something raw at every meal. I don't care if it's broccoli, cucumbers, tomatoes, avocados, salad, something raw at every meal. People always ask me, well, Dr. Joe, what do you eat? And I have that on my website for free. Go to my website, drjoesposito.com, and bottom right-hand corner, there's a little link, and give me your email address, and I'll send you a link to a lecture I did called, So, What Can I Eat? And it's free. I'm going to give it to you as a gift. It's about an hour-long lecture talking about what to eat. I start out my day with Super Greens and Essential Source every day. I think you should too. I think you'll be very happy when you make that decision. And again, you can get those on my website, drjoesposito.com, or just go to Amazon. It's all, a lot of my products are on Amazon as well. If you have an Amazon account, it might be easier. And so 
I take super greens, an essential source, and then a lot of times I'll have an avocado. That's my breakfast. I'll get hungry around 10 o'clock. I'll have a handful of nuts, sometimes not. If I can make it to lunch, the less you eat, the better you're going to be. But if I'm really starving, I have a crazy day at the office, ton of new patients or regular patients, I'll go ahead and have a couple of handfuls of nuts. Lunch is usually a salad. Um, and if you want to make it f- more filling, you could add something called nutritional yeast, which is a great source of amino acids, a uh, great source of uh, B vitamins. And I just sprinkle that on. kind of tastes a little bit like cheddar cheese, I guess, for lack of a better word. But it's called nutritional yeast, and it's a plant-based source. And then you could add some nuts to it. You can add some sunflower seeds, some almonds. Uh, if you want to really kick it up, take some apple cider vinegar and use that as part of your dressing because apple cider vinegar helps your digestive system. In fact, in my new book, Prescription for Extreme Health, I even recommend you drink two, two tablespoons a day. I say put it in a big glass of water, put it next to your bed. When you wake up in the morning, drink it first thing. And so many people have gotten off their coffee just by doing the apple cider vinegar. Now, I don't like the flavor of apple cider vinegar. I think it's a little strong by itself. I don't mind it in a salad. And I'll mix it with tea. I'll take a half a cup of tea and I'll add the two tablespoons of apple cider vinegar. We'll add a little stevia to the tea to sweeten it. I'll drink it. I'll cool the tea down so I can drink it fast. And then I'll chase it with water. And that's just a good way to get that apple cider vinegar in you. So that's, a, a, that's what I do. And then dinner dinner kind of varies. It depends where I'm going, if I'm going out, if I'm going on a date, if I'm going out with my friends, if I'm going home. It kind of varies. But another thing I want you to consider is something called intermittent fasting. And what that is is you skip a dinner about once or twice a week. And the reason is your body digests every meal for about eight hours. This is general numbers. And then you eat another meal, your body starts digesting again. Then you eat another meal, your body starts digesting again. So give it a break. Have lunch, wait eight hours, and then that second eight hours, when you're sleeping, which you don't need energy for anyway, your body's going to start to burn fat. And you become a fat-burning machine. So many people say, well, Dr. Joe... I know I'm overweight. I need to lose the weight. I've done everything. I've hit a plateau. Start doing intermittent fasting two days a week, three days a week. You can do it every night if you wanted to. And notice how that kind of uh, jump starts the weight loss protocol. Look for foods that don't have a lot of ingredients. If you can't pronounce it, don't eat it. Look for organic foods. Stay away from the processed foods. Here's a rule. If you can buy it in a gas station convenience store, you shouldn't be eating it. It's just that simple. So fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds should be most of your diet. Super greens, an essential source, absolutely should be part of your diet. And that's going to help your body get healthy. So A, we don't make you part of that 50% of all Americans that have a chronic disease. And then B, we try to extend your life expectancy. So I want you to ruin the curve. I want you to blow away the statistics by living real, long, happy, healthy life. And you won't have to see the doctor so much, so you'll have a lot more money. You'll save money on food. You'll live longer. You won't be going to the doctors. You'll probably be able to work harder, longer. Uh, You'll probably make more money. There's no downside to getting healthy. So if you have neck pain, back pain, shoulder pain, those are symptoms. Something's wrong. If you have acid reflux, heartburn, burping, gas, bloating, those are symptoms. Something's wrong. Fatigue, something's wrong. And I want to give you the tools to figure out what that is. So if you go to my website... We archive hundreds of hours of radio shows, and I videotape my live lectures. First of all, come out to my live lectures if I'm in the area or come see me. A lot of people travel from out of town to come see us. And we videotape them. They're on the website as well, and you can watch the lectures. And they're a lot of fun too. So if you want all that information, it's all on the website, drjoesposito.com. Supplements, books, those are on my website and on Amazon if you want to order them there. If you want to make an appointment to come see us, We have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. We would love to have the opportunity to have you come see us. My website, drjoesposito.com. You can book an appointment there, right online, or call us. We accept people with all insurances. We accept people without insurance. Car accidents, sports injuries, workers' comp, referrals from doctors. We get a lot of referrals from other doctors who say, Dr. Joe, let's co-manage this case. Let's see if we can work together to help get this person well. When I get those referrals, my heart is warmed. It makes me feel so good that the doctors that you're working with, that we work with, are smart enough to say, we can't fix everything. But you know what, Joe? Neither can you. So why don't we all work together to try to get the people well? We want to get to the cause of this person's problem. So all that information, uh, you can book appointments, order supplements, listen to videos, uh, watch videos, and listen to them. Listen to audios. The website is drjoesposito.com. Also, if you have questions, and I know a lot of you do, You can send me your questions through the website, and I'm more than happy to answer your questions. We want to be your doctors. 
And again, we have offices in Marietta, Duluth, and Stockbridge. Folks, I'm running out of time. If I don't say it enough, thank you. I do appreciate you tuning in and spending time with me. And thanks for having your friends tune in as well. Also, like me on Facebook. We send a lot of good information out there. Hey, thanks for listening. Catch you next time.